Come aboard and bring along all your hopes and dreams. Together we will find the cookbook that you're looking for. I'll make some food for you. I'll tell you if I recommend. We are, we are gonna cook. We are. Today we're taking a look at One Piece Pirate Recipes. I'm pretty stoked for this since I do like the anime. It took me some willpower to push through all those episodes, but I'm glad I did because it's such a fun adventure with a colorful cast of unforgettable characters. One of which is the Stalin profiling, cigarette smoking, meal cooking, kiss stealing, ass kicking, son of a judge, the first rate cook of the Straw Hat Pirates, Sanji. This cookbook is written from his perspective as a collection of dishes that Sanji and the crew have come across in their grand adventures. The first thing that you'll notice is how thin this cookbook is. It's definitely one of my thinner cookbooks, but that's okay because it's also cheaper than most. If you like cookbooks that have a ton of content and recipes, this might not be for you. But if you want something more affordable, that's short and sweet, then this might be right up your alley. The retail price for this is 20 US dollars, which I think makes it a really good idea for a gift. This cookbook is chock full of One Piece artwork. The first thing you notice in the recipe pages are the full color artwork of the One Piece characters. The artwork actually takes up more space than the recipes and food photos. Because of that, the text for the ingredients and recipes as well as the photos detailing the steps are pretty small, which is my main gripe with this cookbook. If you have a hard time reading small text, this is going to be an annoyance to you. But at least there are a lot of full pages and spreads of the food interspersed throughout the book that shows the dishes in larger detail so you can still get a good visual sense of the food. I would say that most of the food you're going to find in this cookbook are Japanese style comfort food and snacks with a focus on simplicity. There's nothing in here that looks too difficult or complex or unfamiliar. They just look like classic reliable no frills dishes. A cool thing I want to point out about the recipe pages is that each recipe comes with a manga moment callout that shows where that particular dish was shown in the manga. I think this is really cool because it's like you're walking down memory lane reminiscing about past adventures. It also makes you appreciate just how many food references there are in One Piece, which now thinking about it isn't too surprising considering how much Sanji likes to cook and how much Luffy likes to eat. And I love how Sanji is front and center in this cookbook. He's not even the main character in One Piece and they easily could have made this more about Luffy or the Straw Hat crew in general, but they really doubled down on the Sanji focus. This cookbook feels like an ode to Sanji which is fitting because food and cooking is such an integral part of his character. If you're a Sanji fan, you're definitely going to appreciate this cookbook. So this cookbook definitely has style, but does it have substance? Let's find out. I'm going to make three recipes that will have us feasting like the King of the Pirates. Let's start with the fried rice Sanji made for Gin. Showing a perfect display of class and generosity, Sanji whipped up this fried rice to feed a down on his luck pirate who was beaten bloody and starving. This kind act and fried rice mastery is what got Sanji a spot in the crew and a spot in my heart. So I gotta see what it's about. What's weird about this is that in the anime, the fried rice Sanji made actually contains a lot of seafood, which is different from the manga's more generic looking version. Since the cookbook's recipe doesn't contain any seafood, we're strictly going to be tasting the manga's version of this dish. First, we're gonna prep the veggies for the fried rice. We're gonna mince a quarter of an onion, then finally slice four small brown mushrooms, and then chop one to two green onions depending on your taste. I love green onions, so I went with two. Then in a frying pan, heat up about a tablespoon of vegetable oil and fry up half of the minced onions and mushrooms. And then you're gonna add about two ounces or 50 grams of corned beef, which is around a quarter of a can. When those are fried up, push everything to the side and add in two large eggs that's been beaten. Before the egg firms up, add in two cups of cooked rice. When making fried rice, I usually use day-old rice from the fridge so it's not too soft for the frying, but the recipe didn't say to do that so I didn't. Sprinkle in half a teaspoon of salt and add in some black pepper to taste. Drizzle in one and a half teaspoon of soy sauce, then add in the other half of the minced onion and mix that briefly. When you're ready to serve, Sprinkle your green onions on top and you got some fried rice Sanji style. Simple and easy. Next up, we're making Luffy's favorite, 
Meat on the Bone. This is the first thing Luffy ordered when Sanji joined the crew as the full-time cook. This version of Meat on the Bone isn't as simple as you think though, cause there's a whole egg inside. This recipe is gonna need four chicken drumsticks. Apparently we're supposed to make tulips out of them. The recipe images are so small that it's kind of hard to make sense out of it, but I think I figured it out. So you take your scissors and start at the handle end. Stick it under the skin and cut up to the meat, cutting as close to the bone as possible. Do the same thing along the other sides of the chicken and then turn the meat kind of inside out and away from the bone. So yeah, a meat tulip or a meat bell or a meat upside down umbrella so that you'll have the meat exposed in order to wrap it around the egg. Then you're gonna take a quarter cup of breadcrumbs and soak it in three tablespoons of milk. While that soaks, you're gonna make a meat mix. In a bowl, mix together 18 ounces or 500 grams of ground chicken with one teaspoon of salt, a bit of black pepper, and one egg. Knead it all together and then mix in the milky breadcrumbs and knead it again. Now to assemble the drumsticks, you're gonna need one hard-boiled egg per chicken drumstick. Take the layers of meat and drape it around a hard-boiled egg. Then oil your hands and then take the meat mixture and cover the drumstick and egg so it looks like one honkin' meat drumstick, just like in the anime. When everything is assembled, bake the drumsticks in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 to 20 minutes. If your drumstick still looks pale, I would raise the temp to 450 and then broil it for another 5 to 10 minutes to give it that nice brown color, which is what I did. When done, you should have four nice, plump meat on the bone. Better eat them before Luffy gets to it. The last dish we're making is the Elephant True Bluefin Sauté, because we can't go on an epic ocean adventure without having seafood. The recipe calls for four fillets of blue marlin, but since I couldn't find that in the fish section, I substituted it with fillets of yellowfin tuna instead, since that was the closest thing I could find. Sprinkle on some salt and white pepper to taste on the fillets, I did it for both sides, fried the fillets in a tablespoon of olive oil. The cookbook suggests five to seven minutes per side, but that would change depending on the fish you have and the thickness of the cut. I went with five minutes for the tuna that I have. Spoiler alert, I overcooked it. I wish I cooked it for less, maybe four minutes. For the sauce, mince half an onion and fry that up in a frying pan with two tablespoons of olive oil and fry it until the onion becomes kind of translucent. Then add in one teaspoon of garlic, two tablespoons of water, two teaspoons of honey, two third teaspoon of salt, and one teaspoon of soy sauce. It also calls for three tablespoons of hulled white sesame seeds, but I omitted that since I didn't have any. Serve the fish on the plate and add the sauce over it. Another simple dish. Itadakimasu, let's eat. Starting off with the fried rice, I love seeing this much rice on a plate. Guys, rice is life. Taste wise, this fried rice is pretty decent, but not mind blowing. I like the ingredients they use, but I prefer my fried rice to have a stronger flavor. I can see myself making this again, but next time I would just double all of the flavorings. Double the onions, double mushrooms, double soy sauce, double salt, double pepper, and double, maybe even triple the corned beef. Corned beef is such an underrated ingredient, and it makes me wonder why it's not used more in fried rice. So yeah, if you like milder tasting fried rice, I recommend making this dish as is, but if you want a bit more kick, double everything. Let's move on to the fish. At first glance, I really like the sear on the fish and I'm digging how good the sauce looks and smells. The flavor of the fish is actually really good. White pepper is also another highly underrated ingredient. It's a taste that's hard to explain. It's milder and less spicy than black pepper and has a really pleasant, earthy, almost floral taste that I think works really well with fish like this. The saltiness and subtle sweetness of the sauce also takes it up a notch. And as I mentioned before, I did overcook the fish, so it's a bit tough, but had I cooked this perfectly, I think this would have been an A+. Now for the meat on the bone. Look how big this thing is. I might need rubber skin like Luffy to wrap my mouth around this thing. So first bite, I got the ground meat coating and a bit of the hard boiled egg. The bite was okay, but the meat did feel a little dry. For my second bite, I tried to get more of the drumstick meat, which was way more moist and tasted a lot better. The drumstick meat was pretty juicy and nice, but I find the seasoning to be a bit lacking. The only seasoning in this recipe is salt and pepper, and I think there's opportunity to introduce more seasoning to the meat. 
maybe marinate the drumsticks beforehand in a soy and vinegar mixture or add some garlic onion or cayenne to the ground meat it just i don't know it just feels like it's missing something i do like how epic it looks and it's pretty fun to make it's also super filling so eating one of these is gonna make you feel like luffy at the end of a meal final verdict of one piece pirate recipes stylish art simple food may need a kick in flavor